In this talk, we're going to think about gastrointestinal infections, infections of the gastrointestinal tract. Now, I'm sure you already know that the gastrointestinal tract is essentially a tube. It goes all the way from the mouth through to the anus, and it's open at both ends. And we put all sorts of things into it every day, huge amounts of bacteria go in with food, and we put utensils in it. So the potential for infection getting into the gastrointestinal tract is fairly high. And I think it's true to say that gastrointestinal infections are amongst the most common type of infections in the world. When you live in cold climates, you tend to get a lot of uh, respiratory type infections, colds and influenza and things. In hotter climates, you tend to get a lot of gastrointestinal infections. So we're dealing with a, a very common type of uh, infection here. And in this talk, we're going to try and look at some of the general principles of gastrointestinal infections. Now, I'm sure you've all had this at one time or another. There's fairly typical groups of symptoms that, that, that go with it. Diarrhea is typical. Watery, loose stools, diarrhea. And there's often an urgency to it. There's an urgency to the, the call to, uh, to defecate. All of a sudden, you get a, 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 an overwhelming desire to, to defecate because there's loose stool in the, um, in the rectum. Very often there's vomiting that goes with it as well. Diarrhea and vomiting often go together. Although vomiting is probably less common, uh, and diarrhea being slightly more common, but, but very often the two, diarrhea and vomiting, go together. And, and there's a fairly typical abdominal pain goes with it. Very often it's, it's what you call a colicky pain. There's maybe spasms. You can, feel, you can feel the gut sort of, feels like the gut's going into some sort of spasm and you get colicky uh, abdominal pains with it. And this, of course, makes you feel unwell. You get a malaise. The patient feels uh, under the weather, unwell, abdominal pain, diarrhea. And occasionally, um, depending on the nature of infection, the type of infecting organism, there can be a pyrexia, uh, a temperature associated with the gastrointestinal infection. So a fairly typical picture. I'm sure you've all experienced it uh, at one time or another. F fairly unpleasant. Um, now, the... The other introductory thing to say is about the transmission of these gastrointestinal infections. Virtually always they're, they're a fecal-oral uh, transmission, typically from human faeces to a human mouth, although it can be from animal faeces as well. So fecal material is deposited into the environment, and typically this gets into the water supply. There's contamination of the water supply with sewage. This means that the bacteria from someone's faeces gets into your mouth and makes you, uh, make, makes you ill, or, or the viruses, whatever the organism is. So <clears throat> contamination of food or water or some other way that faecal residues get into the mouth. It could be through food, it could be through water, it could be through direct contact. Now, the etiology of any disease is partly related to endogenous factors, that is, factors, from result, uh, factors arising from the individual, depending on the genetics of the individual and the health of the individual at the time. The other etiological factor in illness are uh, exogenous factors, environmental factors. So very often, whether you get an infection or not depends maybe as much on your resistance to it as the dose of the infection that you get. But with gastrointestinal infections, it seems to me the main etiology is, is exogenous. It's the environmental factors that seem to make the, the difference as to whether someone gets uh, gastroenteritis or not. And perhaps the most important factor is sanitation. Sanitation relates to the health, healthiness or unhealthiness of the environment. So when you sanitise something, you clean it. Sanitise actually means to, to take away the potential pathogenic microorganisms or indeed to take away the habitat in which those potential pathogenic microorganisms might live. So sanitation is absolutely vital. There needs to be a clear separation where people live between the waste, the sewage and the urine where that goes and the food and the water supply. Whenever there's a breakdown in that, then gastroenteritis of various types will occur. And severe outbreaks 
of infectious, potentially deadly gastroenteritis can occur when you get contamination of water and uh, food with waste material, particularly faecal material. So there needs to be this separation. And in, in most areas, this, this separation is, is established. But whenever there's a problem, like if there's a refugee situation or a disaster situation, and people are moved away from their homes into uh, temporary accommodation, and, and the, the infrastructure of sewage and water supply is not there, then there's the risk of the cross-contamination occurring between the, um, the, the, the faeces and, and the food and the water. And this happens in, in many developing uh, countries. There's contamination of the drinking water. If, if people are defecating in a river, and if people are drinking water out of that same river, then clearly the water supply is going to be contaminated. In fact, it's probably true to say that the main single factor determining health in the world at the moment is the purity of the water supply. If you have a pure water supply, then the odds are that people are going to be fairly healthy most of the time. If the water supply is contaminated, you'll get these problems continuously. So sanitation and water supplies, probably the most crucial factor. Food as well, of course, the way food is prepared and the lack of contamination of food is also going to be very important. Now, another interesting factor that uh, seems to influence the incidence of gastroenteritis is the environmental temperature, the ambient temperature. Now, if bacteria are in the environment and the environment's warm, then there's a good chance that the bacteria are going to multiply. If the temperature is cold, then these things are less likely because the bacteria aren't going to multiply as quickly. That's one reason that refrigeration can be useful in cutting down the incidence of bacterial infections because it reduces the rate at which the bacteria can divide. So the rule of thumb is that the warmer the environment, the quicker the bacteria divide. The colder the environment, the slower the bacteria will divide. So in hot environments, there's likely to be more bacteria around. In cold environments, there's likely to be less bacteria around. Personal hygiene is, of course, vital as well. After someone's been to the toilet, they should wash their hands to prevent remnants of faecal bacteria being on their hands, which could potentially be transmitted to other people, to other people's water, to other people's food supply. So personal hygiene, very important. Community hygiene, equally important that these things need, hygiene needs to be paid attention to on an individual level and on a community level. And that's why the most single important factor influencing the health of children in the world is the educational level of the mother. If the mother is educated and she takes these factors into account, it's much more likely the child is going to be healthy. If the mother is uneducated with illiterate mothers, then that has a harmful effect on the health of the child. So if you want healthy communities, education is, is all part of that. So transmission of gastroenteritis can be by water, by food, or by secondary spread. That means if someone has an infection, they can pass it directly onto someone else through physical contact. Indeed, sometimes by uh, aerosolization as well, vomit can cause aerosolization of pathogenic viruses and uh, bacterial particles. So water, food, secondary spread. Try and prevent these infections from occurring by these good hygiene measures. And if they do occur, prevent them from spreading also by good hygiene measures. What we're going to think about now are the natural defences that the gastrointestinal tract has against infection. Because if these natural defences are impaired, then infection is going to become more likely. And one obvious one is that we can taste and we can smell. So if food is bad, we don't eat it. 